There you are, sir. That was fucking weird. <clears throat> I fucking sent the little kids down here. <laughs> Lower this down so they can do it. This is where people say you should have prepared before you started your video. It's not very professional. You know what I say to that? Yeah, we say to that when people say something like that. I have no idea. I don't fucking care. We're not doing this to be professional. We're doing this for fun. So I'm going to tell y'all, man, before we get to start cutting today, is if you're not having fun at what you're doing in the reptile hobby, you're doing it wrong. Plain and simple. Now, that doesn't mean you should never have a bad day. You're going to have bad days. I have bad days. Caleb has bad days. Kurt, I don't know. That dude just has, like, level days. <laughs> like, <laughs> anyway, the point I want to make, though, before we get rolling on this, for those of you, probably two of you, watching Super Herb, is that a pretty accurate guess? 13. 13, damn. Maybe I should do this early in the morning before often, or more often. Uh, you have to bear with me. There was brew at the zoo last night. So I went to Sunset Zoo, and there was probably 30 to 40 beer vendors, and I had a really good time. Uh, the tiger was smart and just went in its house, so the drunks would like to just ignore it. But the sloth bears were out playing with us drunky drunks, and the cheetahs were running around. And then you start looking for a cheetah in the dark, and you realize you know it's in there, but you can't see it. Not some bitch can see you. Yeah. But anyway, point being, I had a blast. So I am a little bit uh, not on my A game, if we're going to be fully honest today. Um, but you should be having fun at this. If you get up every day and you go do reptiles and you hate it, you just hate it, you're not happy, it sucks, I'm going to tell you to get out. So I'm going to do, man. Like, And I'm not, or I'm going to tell you to change what you're doing if you want to stay in. Because if you ain't having fun doing this or enjoying doing this, you're doing it wrong. There are days I don't want to do the work. Absolutely. There are days it's overwhelming. Absolutely. But there's also a lot of stuff I'd never trade in a great time. So that is our focus. Before we start cutting the day, I gotta say thanks to Misty. She heard us say we needed to get some new scissors and she beat me to the punch and sent us a pack of scissors and they're even purple. So we're gonna be using these new scissors from the Cranza Family Reptiles. Rawr. They came in my Amazon yesterday. I was like, that's awesome. So thank you very much. And there's like different styles. Oh man, there's two of my favorite styles. So I've never used these guys, that type of hook. These two little curved ones right there, those are my favorite. So I'm gonna put three scissors up and we're gonna open one today. So I can figure out, there we are. Man, it makes sense they'd open point not out, right? <laughs> so here we go. Oh, there's even more of a curve than I'm used to, but I think we'll make that work. So the first ones we're going to cut are these guys here. These are very interesting, uh, not for the genetics. One of them's already out, as you can see, but the eggs themselves. So usually when you start to see this blue, right, that is not a good sign. That's bad. Bad. Uh, these three eggs all here look a little suspect. Pipped, pipped, and pipped. And you already threw the empty one away? No. Where's Which one's empty? I couldn't find it. I just grabbed them out. I think it's this one. It's this one. That one's empty? That one's empty. Holy God, that thing like completely held its form. I mean, it's hollow, y'all. Yeah. It's empty. There's just a little bit of yolk, probably mass in there. Let me open it up for you. But usually when you get that blue, you're not going to do well. Yeah, there's a fly larva on some undigested un, uh, yolk in there. That's about it. But the baby that came out looks pretty stellar. That's a really nice pine. I dig it because you got the white ring there. It's got one, two, three, four, about five full rings, uh, which is what I like. I like a lot of, I like a lot of color, but I want the white breaks. I want it to be all broken up. So that's a nice pie. Let's see how else we did. We're gonna start with the uglier eggs first, just because I'm really curious about that. Oh, it looked funky in there for a second. There, we have the head color, which is always a little dark on these guys. That's a nice looking pie, too. I mean, I got at least one full ring of white. Get some movement in there. We're not going to have probably, I don't think, a couple more. I think it'll matter at this point. We already got one out. 
Oh, we have a white tip tail. And that's why you mind your scissors, everybody, because that tail was right up there. So it would have been easy to catch if we weren't paying attention. Uh, but yeah, we're going to have some more wild I thought, hopefully, because we got that white tail. There's a white break there. Looks like there's going to be a full ring right here. So not a bad looking little pied. We'll know more when it's out. Forest Harper would like to know the pairing. Oh, pairing is pied to pied. I guess I should have shared that. Uh, so shouldn't be any surprise genetically in here. We're going to hit all pieds. I mean, of course, we said that the other day. We hit something weird. So, yeah. uh, you know, we think that was a milkman pairing. And that's not because of Caleb's naked. Well, it kind of is, but it's not saying he did it. What I mean is I think we put the wrong mail in there one time. Just had to not remember doing it. <laughs> so we had a sneaking in the back door milkman situation. Another another nice pied, a lot of orange. So when I judge my pieds, I'm judging on that orange color right there. I want a lot of high, good, bright orange in a single gene pied. So if you combo that, it's going to make nicer animals. Look at that. I don't like the darker color to my pieds. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a personal preference. I want the orange. So... Charlie Brown asked, do you guys let it go any of those Western rattlesnake, Western diamondback babies? Yeah, all of them, probably, but one. I mean, that's the plan. Uh, we got to get them all feeding good first. I think the last one took its first meal, finally. So, there's still an outside shot of more babies, but probably not. We thought we saw some in ultrasound, actually. And uh, she never went, so now it's ain't looking so good. That's looking really nice. Yeah, I'm digging that one. Okay, at your face there, at your nose. I like that one. That one maybe it's gonna depend on how much striping there is, but I really like the color on it. So far, I'm really happy with these. Don't tell Kurt. We might hold back like five of these. <laughs> That's an inside joke, y'all. Kurt says I got too much pied. So I'm like, oh, I should keep this one. Really good color, but probably going to be a lower white. If I was a betting man. See a lot of white on the sides, but I'm seeing a lot of nice orange. Oh, yeah, that thing's wonderfully colored. Oh, so you can see this one's also pipped here. Come here, you go. We'll just connect that dot really quick. Hi, buddy. Now, I'd say that was a little darker than the others, personally, from what I can see so far. So, like, when I talk about darker, look at that dark orange color there versus that bright orange color there. So, my favorite is this kind of coloration versus that. What you'll see, too, is some of them have a little bit of a dark area and then a not like a light, brighter area to them, too. Holy fuck, that one's a paradox. Yeah, I was looking at that earlier. I mean, that's not pied pattern at all. Or pied color. How the hell did that happen? Which is funny pied. because Ryan Erecta just asked if we've ever produced a paradox. We have quite a few times, and now here is... I mean, that's what I'd say that is. Another one. That looks... What we're looking at, guys, is right here. This looks like... You can pick it up if you want. Looks like a regular alien head marking uh, in that pied. Yeah. Especially when you get it out into the light and hold it sideways. You can see... Doesn't match up. No, that's Paradox. Yep. So there you go, Paradox Pied. That's the <laughs> that's first time I've ever had a Paradox Ryan, did you pied? ask that because you saw that, or were you really just curious and that just happened to be coincidental? Yeah, I couldn't even see the comments. I just looked over the thing and said, oh, look at that shit. We've hit most of our Paradox stuff with our banana stuff, to be honest. Oh, 
Although I do believe that is the first paradox of the year we've hit. Yes. Uh, you gonna move for me? You're big, you're thick. I'm pretty sure you're fine. It'll feel better if you'd move a little bit or quiver in there. Oh, I got this all breath. Maybe. Maybe I was hoping to see something. Okay, there's movement. A lot of times if you can get down close to where the... Uh, if you're having trouble seeing one move and you're kind of concerned. If you can get close to like... not on The, under, the underside's not bad to touch. But right where that side starts to wrap around the bottom, right before the scales start to change, and you can rub right there. They tend to suck that in a little bit, and you can get a little bit of movement on one to know it's still, it's still kicking. So that one's doing fine. Um, last egg for this litter. We got another one to cut, so don't go anywhere. How many we got on here today? Thirty-one. Thirty-one. That's not bad. When YouTube liked me, we'd get like hundred and fifty. Damn you, scissors! I dropped. But that's okay. I get annoyed that they. You know, what they really want us to do, is I always joke they don't like me, that's probably not actually the case. It's more of a, I don't play the logarithm as well as I should. They really want me doing a bunch of shorts and shit like that. And we do it, oh, sometimes, not all the time. The reason I say, oh, is again, there's nothing genetically to get excited about here. We know what they're all going to be. But that is orange. That's really pretty. Yeah, that's great. All the way up on the back, too. God, that's nice. Woo! Okay, so I'm really happy with that. I'd say for a pied to pied clutch, can't complain. I mean, what you're really looking for is healthy babies, which you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? We already threw the empty away. Yep. So we had eight. Eight healthy babies. That's what you're after. Uh, all recessive. All, uh, I mean, you know, are pieds great big money anymore? No, they're not, y'all. They're not, they're not the money they once were. But are they uh, still a good snake? Yeah. It's, it's one of those things that will always produce. Uh, and again, we already just took the grate out. We still use the grates. It's just easier to take them out before I film. And the reason I always produce is because I think, you know, I don't want to be the guy that only has snakes that are for other breeders on my table. I want to be the guy that also, when that kid comes up, and their parents let them get their first snake, have something really cool for that. Um, or that family, or that adult, or whoever it may be. You know, and pides, and albinos, and bells, they're always going to fit that niche. Always, 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 always. And so I will probably always try to produce some pied, some albinos, and some bells, and some things of that nature that are, you know, they're going to get you decent when you sell them. Are they thousands of dollars? No. But if I go to a place and sell five pies, am I pretty happy? If I sell some other shit, yeah. <laughs> like, that probably doesn't make my day. But uh, you get what I'm saying. Like, I want to have some of that there. It's always an important thing to me. So, okay. On to this. So this is a pinstripe female, bred to our in-house produced banana black pastel male, his first pairing. So uh, we're hoping for, I really like banana pins. I think banana pins look great as babies especially. Uh, I'm hoping for some banana pin black pastels to get a little bit more dark in there. So let's start chopping these open and see what we get. Mr. Guaps asked, what is the blue a sign of that makes it a bad thing? The blue on the egg? I think that's what he's referencing. Uh, it's usually like the beginning of a mold. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so eggs are naturally mold resistant and that blue color is going to be a, on those it's just a coloration and I... I don't think we had any eggs in there we pulled out or go bad. No, we're So I think we're eight. just at the end, and some of that mold resistance is wearing out. Those eggs are ready to be done. Um, but early on, you'll see that, and then you'll get like a, a goop kind of slime, slime on top yeah. of it. And, and that's that's bad egg, then. That's <laughs> a bad egg. So uh, when you start seeing blue, it's always worrisome to me. But those are great. I mean, I, I don't have many eggs that start to have that color and have healthy babies like that inside. So... Um, yeah, but there was also no slime. It was very just. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah, I'm gonna start right in the middle. 
Oh, gooey, gooey. Oh, I don't like that look. And you can see the... I mean, we're live in there. Mm -hmm. We're moving. I cannot tell what the hell that is, though. Can you? <laughs> no banana, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can't. I think there is banana. Oh, that's the tail. I was thinking that was... The bottom yeah there's probably banana look how light like that, that is. is yeah maybe banana pin maybe i think it's a boy yeah i'd say it's a boy it's a boy the one time you can actually sex it in the egg yeah people say you shouldn't can't do that that's a boy although i don't like the fact that we're seeing the hemi pins out like that uh, Bold Coast Exotics said I've been super busy this summer with construction business so I haven't been following you guys as much as I usually do what's your most anticipated clutch this season oh shit I don't even probably for me it's probably the scale of stuff you know uh, there's banana that's a banana or banana black pastel can't tell which one yet but it's pretty dark yeah I think so I, I think it's black yeah. pastel banana I'd say for me it's a scale of stuff. Look, man, I know Brian has a post up. Was it today or yesterday? It was an hour ago. And I haven't had a chance to watch it, but the title was something along the lines of more bad news about my health. Oh, uh, I don't know what's going on, so I haven't I haven't watched it. But I will never forget watching him cut those first scaleless and just kind of those felt like for me, for him, it was a big fuck you to a lot of people who were like, that'll never work, and then it did. And uh, he was running around and, and had just unabashed joy about it. And I was amazed, right? And so for the longest time, I've wanted to hatch my own scaleless. I don't really give two shits about the project. I really don't. If the project proves viable, is that great for me? Yeah, that's going to be great for me because we stayed in it. We stayed in it even when others were getting out, not because... The money wasn't going to be there or whatnot because I wanted to have that shared experience with somebody I consider, uh, I hate to use the word friend because he didn't know me that well, but he's an acquaintance. We've, we've met, we've talked, you know, um, who I have the utmost respect for and has been kind of a mentor from afar, right? I wanted to share that with him and I wanted it to happen while he was still with us in case he isn't. Uh, he won't be someday. Hopefully it's a long time from now, right? Uh, but I I wanted to, to do that while he was still here. So for me, that was the most anticipated clutch. Uh, we did hit a scale this year. I'm happy to report it's doing pretty good. It's eaten every meal but one, and it's going into its second shed now. So we actually, before camera, just bumped up the humidity. It did give me a scare. I, I actually thought it had died on me randomly, and I was, but it was just being an asshole. It was fine. Um, it looked like when it tried to eat, it got some litter in his mouth. So I think what we're going to do with it now is, was Caleb and I were talking, I had to clean it out, and he's had to clean it out once before too. Uh, we we're going to, we're keeping it on a coconut, right? But with the skin, the skin's a little stickier, especially when you put some moisture there, things kind of get stuck to it. So we're going to feed it in an, an alternate tub, which I know sounds redneck and a way of doing things, right? but to prevent some of that being an issue. Because I think what happens with those is they, they've had a low survivability due to just different care needs. So we're all kind of, you know, figuring it out as we go and nobody wants to talk about failures. So therefore nobody shares, hey, this went wrong. I get that. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, for humidity, we're, we actually keep it pretty dry. And then as it goes into shed, you bump it up pretty hardcore. And that's kind of what we've talked to some others about success on getting good sheds. Its first shed was perfect. Uh, we'll see how the second shed goes. You don't really see them going to blue. They just get kind of wrinkly. You just kind of like look at them like, oh, they're kind of wrinkly, you know. Uh, so that's, that's where we're at right now. But that was the most exciting for me. I've got another set of eggs. We just pulled five the other day from a super pastel scaleless head, bred to a lemon blast scaleless head, and also bred to a champagne pastel scaleless head. So I have another shot at it. I do believe the Lemon Blast will be dad because we saw more locks with him. We never saw locks with the other one, I don't believe. Um, but 
it, it wasn't a money thing, right? It was a experience thing. And for me, that's what this is all about. Other people can go chasing dollar bills and worry about the market getting bad and getting good. You know, I told you a long time ago, the market was going to go to shit for a while. And everybody, no, 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 you can't say that. Yeah, I can. And I was right. The market did go to shit. Still is shit. It's going to get better. It always does. No big deal. You know, uh, if you've got your passion, you're built to survive that automatically. If your passion is money, you're not ever built to survive anything. If your passion is money, you should work in finance, right? That's what you should do. If your passion is animals, then work in animals. When the market's good, you're going to feast a little bit. When the market's bad, it's going to be a little bit of famine. That's okay. You're doing what you want to do. Who the fuck cares? End of story. All right, on to that. That's a, let's cut this bad boy here. Welcome, Hyperspace. I'm glad you made it. We cut your favorite clutch of the year. <laughs> uh, hides. We cut some hides. For those that don't know, he's a big believer in the half-assed paint job. He's not a fan of pides, which is okay. Man, the banana is strong today. That's banana and pan and probably black pasta. That's a triple right there. Yeah. I, I mean, and you're probably wondering how the hell are you guys calling out the egg like that? Well, the color, the pattern, and then you look at how blown out that pattern is on that pin. That would not be normal for the pins. That's the black pasta. I'll help them blow that pattern out like all through here and here, I'd say. Uh, but... That's a triple. So I didn't miss anything. <laughs> oh, damn. You missed me talking. That's something. Uh, sorry to hear that, Jay Topkins. Brian is a gr is great people. We are fighting the same fight. Different cancers, different outcomes. No cures for me, but it's all the same fight. I feel you. You know, and we haven't talked about it much, but the guy holding the camera, I think you've okayed that. Too late now. Is, is a... <laughs> yeah, too late now. <laughs> is also a cancer survivor. So we've had that here in our facility uh, and it started when he was working at the shop we owned part of and, you know, got through it once and had to go back through some stuff when he was here as a team. Uh, I don't know what else to call it because Caleb's not really an employee. He's a team member. Like, he doesn't have a schedule and it's not, it's a, it's a team. Um, that's the best way. I think that's the best way, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, he had, so we get it. He gets it more than I do, you know, but uh, it's always scary when somebody you care about, whether it's family, like, you know, I've had grandparents go through it back in the day and, and whatnot, or, or friends. Uh, I imagine it's 10 times scarier when it's you. So, you know, keep up the fight as best you can. And with what you got, live life and be an example. I mean, that's the best I can tell you. That's probably shitty advice because it's got to be hard every day. Uh, but man, my heart goes out to anybody going through that shit. Cancer is one thing. I don't give a shit if you're a Republican or you're a Democrat or you're an atheist or you're a Christian. You know, uh, cancer is one thing that we can all get behind and say sucks balls, right? I don't think there's any group out there that likes cancer. So we can all band together and say fuck cancer. And that is something that the least we can all agree on. You know, <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why everything else has to be so divisive. I don't know why. I, I don't get it. But anyway. Fuck cancer. I guess that's a long end of that. We'll see how... So three snakes, three bananas. We'll pick up an albino scaleless head pin. Ooh, nice. That would be nice. I've seen some alb al scaleless albinos that look really nice. I could see them looking good. You know what I think would look really good with them? Mm. Black pastel. Mm. Something to bump up that albino contrast. Yeah. Because scaleless heads, you want to keep high contrast on those. Hi, little buddy. Is it just me, or is that a banana, too? I think that's a banana, too. Yeah. 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 Okay. So if you're keeping score, we've cut four. four eggs and four bananas. I swear to God, the male is not a super banana. I don't think. Mm -hmm. Can't be. It can't be. Because banana is black pastel, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was. He might have been from our failed attempt at the super black pastel stuff. But one time we tried that. But even then, no chance for super banana. And there's a proof in the pudding. 
Because this one is not banana. It's a nice black pastel pin, though, for sure. Yeah, that's a cool looking snake right there. Should screenshot it and say, Monsoon! Bunch of question mark, exclamation points. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be a monsoon, right? I'll be honest, right? Like, to me. Oh, you want that back open? Yeah. You know, that looks like a, a, a start of a. Uh, trying to get the light just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. It kind of looks monsoony. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of monsoon. It just looks like a really wacky pinstripe. And I think I can do the same thing with less money. But it's still, I mean, if you're into monsoon, that's no hate. You know, if you love it, you love it. I, I just not, it's not my thing. Don't worry. The monsoon people, there's not as many of them as there are clown people that I've pissed off. So you're safe. That's true. You're safe. The clown, the folks who worship at the altar of clown. I have made angry with all my anti-clown talk. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I think Monsoon is still cool, but not my cup of tea. Oh, man. There's another black pastel Monsoon. Or not. God damn it. <laughs> Another black pastel pin. Yeah, I think. I'd agree. It's too blown out. Yeah. And dark. Pretty snake though. Yeah. So here's, I mean, here's the thing. That's weird that the first four all. <laughs> the yeah. We got four and two. Uh, it looks like a couple things we can tell you right away is the banana hit heavy because there's at least four of those. Uh, the pin appears to have hit pretty good. We know of at least three of those. So that's a couple we can't tell for sure. Like, you know, uh, that's pin. So that one I can't tell on yet. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't so. think so. Uh, this one is no. not pin, and this one is flipped upside down. So we okay. just we can't tell. You know what? Let's cut a little more of that one. Maybe we can get a little better view here, right? Well, that was worthless. Morning, Char. Well, unless I want a J from Prehistoric Pets it, and I don't. We just won't know on that one for sure. Uh, but the pin hit at least what it should have. The banana hit pretty hard. And I'm feeling pretty good about the black pastel hitting pretty hard because we know we got those two that are black pastel, right? We're already pretty solid that that's a black pastel triple. And then that one here would surprise me if it ends up not being a black pastel banana. Yeah. So I, I think we we hit it pretty good. There's no normals. That's number one. Actually, number one is they're all alive and healthy. Number two is there's no normals. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with results. I can't complain at all. Uh, I mean, I could, but again, what good does it do? And we've had some bad, bad luck on a few clutches. We've got some good luck on a few clutches. And usually, guys, that shit all works out, which is kind of what we're seeing here. So, Caleb, any questions we have to pop up? Uh, nope. Dennis said, good morning. I'll miss you guys. Oh, Dennis, don't worry. So, I will be, uh, you'll see a lot of Caleb next few, few yeah. days. I'll be gone for, I think, five days, some shit like that, in Colorado, uh, just to watch the Aspens change. And then we come back for two or three days, and then we're off for a fun car weekend in Eureka Springs. And then I'm back until thanks, well. And I'm back until we, Kurt and I will end up going to Monday Night Football. Uh, Caleb was supposed to go, and work had to fuck him over. So there will be like one Monday where we're, we're gone for part of a weekend. Uh, it'll be a Caleb and Matt trip on up to Minnesota to watch the Vikings versus the Niners in Monday Night Football and see how many times the Vikings can fumble. Because we're really good at that. So that's kind of where our future plans are. And then I'm around until Thanksgiving. And then I'm around until New Year's. And then I'm around until probably spring break. And then, then yeah, I travel too much, but it's what keeps me happy. Makes these guys work extra hard when I'm gone, though, poor bastards. All right, anything else you want to add? Two things. Sure. One, Carranza is now in the live stream. So, once oh, again, thank you for thank the you. scissors. We just used them. This is a pair we elected, selected to use. Of course, we gave you a shout-out for sending us uh, the most nice gift. She there. says... Monsoon is my dream. I'll never own one, but damn, I would love to. Don't say uh, that. Don't There's say that. always Listen, that chance. Not to mention, eight, nine years from now, Monsoon is 300 bucks. 
True. It just is. People are like, no, that will never happen. It'll happen. Banana was 10K. Look at it now. Yeah. Okay? And like, sh- it takes a little longer on recessives, but it's going to happen. It's just, yep. as more and more people put them out there, they become less and less uh I think Rare. it was Krypton we were looking at the other day where you could get Krypton Het DGs, which like three years ago were three grand. Yeah. And when we were looking at Morph Market the other day, you could pick some up for $500. Yeah, if you trust the Het. I didn't yeah. look at who they were from, so I'm not saying anything bad. But yeah. Yeah, it's just a different world, man. It's a different uh, world. Shark says, I'm late. Female or female maker bananas? N- no. Probably all males. Yeah. Probably all males. It, was, it should have been a male. All male makers. Maker. Yeah. Uh, we do have some female makers. I don't think that is one. I have to double check on his shit. No, because he came from Odin. Did he? Yeah. For sure? Yeah. Are you 100% positive? Yeah. How do you remember that and I don't? Because I have crazy memory when it comes to animals. But anything else or where I set something down, I don't. <laughs> it's like my brain car- compartmentalized animals as like, the most important, so that takes up 99.9% of my brain and memory, and then the other 0.9% is, like, necessities to survive. Well, since that adds up to 100.808%, yep. it's obviously not used for math. It's true. Because it's 99.9, and then the other, you know, 0.9% or whatever it was you said. Yeah, I don't even know what I said. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. That's funny. I, you need a female or female maker. I we got them. I, I think we have some this we, year. We've got them. So, uh, the sorry. super banana. Well, we got super bananas back there that we may end up holding one. Uh, we'll see. We've got female bananas that make 50 50, and anything from them is a female maker. I'm trying to think if we've ever held something back from her or keep. I think, well. Yeah. No. Our female. That's a female. That's a female. I know we've got at least two breedable female bananas. Uh. I, yeah. We may not, maybe, we may not have a female maker, male. But I got girl bananas, so I wasn't too worried about it. You know what? I was wrong. What? About saying it was Odin. It was the original black pastel banana male. Uh-huh. To the pinstripe, the only reason we kept him, you kept him back in the first place was because he had the paradoxing on his head, yeah. and then you ended up needing him anyways. So yeah, because we unfortunately lost that male. Yeah. So, but it was a male banana, so male maker. Oh. Uh. Shar will answer that question on Patreon. She asked about a list coming. Yeah. So check when we go Patreon. Sign up if you're not on there, so we can talk about that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I know, I know somebody's going to now be like, well, oh, they shouldn't do all that on just Patreon. Listen, I love all you people on YouTube. I really do. You help me a ton and grow the channel. I have nothing but love for you. But the fact of the matter is, Patreon is what pays the bills. So we are going to always do more there. It's five bucks. If you want more, it's five bucks. Like it ain't the end of the world. It's one less Starbucks. Actually, it's just making your Starbucks coffee a little smaller. That's all you got to do. I mean,. You piss five bucks away on a hundred things a month. Most people do. Piss it away here, and you'll get that content. Get that extra stuff. What do you think of Burmese pythons? Uh, so I won't ever probably breed Burmese. And it's not that I don't like them. There's some pretty Burmese out there, but the simple fact of the matter is, I would have less colors to work with because I can't keep Burmese like this. They take up too much damn space, right? Uh, so it, it would lower the amount of animals I have. Maybe not the number of babies, because they shout a ton of babies, but uh, I also don't think Burmese are appropriate animals to keep for most keepers. I'm not saying all, but most keepers, are, it's not appropriate for. Uh, it's also not appropriate for a new keeper on a Burmese. It's not the best thing to start with. So I just don't feel real good about, I didn't feel good about carrying them in the shop, my own part of the shop, because uh, you had a lot of new people come in there, you know? And I'd always try to talk them out of a Burmese and into a ball python or a corn snake. So I probably won't do it for that simple reason. It's kind of like rattlesnakes, right? Are rattlesnakes appropriate for most people to keep? No, no, they're not. Are they appropriate for me? Yeah. Are they appropriate for a lot of other people with the experience? Yeah. But should I sell it to a 16-year-old kid? No, I should not. That'd be irresponsible of me. 
Same with the Burmese pythons, how I feel most of the time. So, What do you know about LC Black Magic? I think Black Magic is, what, Mojave Black Pastel? And then I don't know what LC is. This is why names are stupid. Uh, because I would rather just have the genetics listed. And I'm guilty of it too, man. We name shit stupid, funky things because it's fun. But uh, combos... Anytime you use a combo name, you should put the genetics limit. I don't even want to, like, I just, I don't know. That's just my feeling. Because it's also, you have to keep up so many combo names along with this. And then this guy's calling this line with this, this, and this line over here with this, this, and, you know, Mystic verse. Uh, so you have Mystic Potion, right? Which is a Mystic Mojave. Beautiful animal. And then you've got the, uh, what's the other one? It's the same as Mystic Mojave, but it's a different thing. Purple Passion. Yeah. Well, what the fuck is that one even? Something Mojave? Which is the <laughs> Mojave. Same I don't know anymore. Yeah. There's too many. That's the problem right there. <laughs> That's the problem. So I, I couldn't even tell you what Black Magic is, but you break out the genetics. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I like that. Or I don't like that most of the time, if I've ever been into it. So. Oh. Uh. Best ten dollars I forget I spend every month in refer reference to Patreon. Thank you. Um, nope, it's new. So that means someone named a morph the same as a combo. Cause there's also a combo called Black Magic. So I haven't seen it then. I guess that probably means Matt uh, hasn't seen it then. I take all new morphs with a grain of salt, even things we work on here, right? Because until you can show me the work. It has to be one of two things. One, be wildly new, where there's no doubt. But if it looks like this, or kind of does this, then you have to show me the work to prove that's new. There are too many people out there in too big of a rush to try to make a buck that will take something and name it and not do the work and then release it without, and just say it's new. Oh, this is new. And because of X, without doing the work. That's like with our Hellfire project, we're doing the work. And we're working to prove it's not new because that's how you actually prove it is new. And we may prove it isn't new. And I'm okay with that. I'd rather do the work than be the asshole running a cash grab. Um, we've seen that a hundred times. A hundred times lately. Where, oh, there's this new gene. Ends up being the same as a different gene. You know? And, it, and, and then people try to hold on to, no, 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 it's not the same. And I'm not going to be that guy, man. So, for, I don't know anything about it. I don't know if it's new or not, but... I'm just telling you, until I see the work, I'm a disbeliever anymore. And the market's made me that way. The market's made me that way because I've seen too many things that are, you know, end up being the same as this. And then people are trying to charge more and call it this when it's literally just the same fucking gene. Um, I think we have that more now because you get seven and eight and nine gene snakes and all this, right? And you get people who are buying that shit that are new and harder to identify what's in there so you get a snake that's got something in there that you don't know is in there because it's a subtle gene then when you breed it some weird shit pops out and how many different forms of chocolate do we have now you know what i'm saying or, so mahogany. Thing, or mahogany coming out now right uh and, and so it, it's that it, it's that's what's causing it and i think anyway it seems like the most logical reason why we're having that problem i don't think it's always nefarious but then you got to do the if that pops out you got to do the work you gotta do the work. Simple as that. What about super dwarf retics? Again, I'm, I'm not a retic guy. If I was gonna get into retics, it'd probably be super dwarfs. You know, I'll have a super dwarf, and by the time I die, I think they're super cool. They are cool, and they're a much smaller, but they're still big. Yeah. You know, so like they're they're probably better, but I'm probably not gonna switch my breed over to super dwarf retics anytime soon. There's some good people doing it. You know, like uh, God, fucking. Reach around reptiles. Let's reach out. I always call him Reach around. I think it's just a funny name. Uh, good guy. He specializes in some of the dwarf and super dwarf stuff. And if I was probably looking, that might be one of the first places I kick tires on. Would be Garrett. So, good question from Straight Blast Pythons. Looking yeah. to add another species. I have balls and womas. Would you say short tails, spotted pythons, or angolans are Ooh. for a better option next? Man, that's... I wouldn't do the spotted personally. I'm just not a big fan of them. That's just my, my jam. I'm going to give you two thoughts, and then I'll let Caleb chime in with what he thinks, see if his is different than mine. So I think the Angolans are a less work with species, and if you want to do some crosses with balls, you could do that with Angolans. 
So that could make for some fun. I'm not a huge crossbreed guy, but it can be done. Make angry balls. Uh, it's a good name. I don't know who came up with that one. So we're making fun of combo names. Yeah, I'm like, oh, angry balls. It's a great fucking name. Uh, but you can do that. And Angolans are really pretty, and they're they're not worked with a lot. On the flip side of that, the short tails, you know, uh, they have a lot of morphs to play with. We just hatched our first set of those ever. We're pretty excited. Um, we did the cutting the other day with Kurt. I think yesterday or two days ago. Fuck out, two days ago. I was mm -hmm. drunk yesterday. Um, so you know they're really cool, but it just depends. I would do one of those two. It depends if I wanted a new species and morphs to play with, or if I wanted a more unique species. Because I, I think the Angolans are done less. What do you think, Caleb? Um, so me, I would not go the Angolan route. <sighs> Just for me, as babies, they just look like funky ball pythons. They have the ball python head. They grow up to be a drastically different looking animal, but not for me. I still think they're cool, and I would love to have some one day. But if I given the choice, if you're looking for something unique, I would go the spotted python route because they stay small. I think they're heavily underrated. You know, you're looking at a, a python that gets three foot max. So if the market were, if you were to you know, try and sell something to a new person, right? That is a, a viable option away from ball pythons if you didn't have anything for sale. But if you want something with morphs, short tails are the way to go. They're got tons compared to spotted pythons and golems. Nowhere near to ball pythons, but if you want something with morphs that you can create and customize and all that stuff, short tails are the way to go. This is a great example of when you ask that question, two different people are going to give you two different answers. You know, and, not, and Caleb's not wrong, and I'm not wrong, but uh, our answers are vastly different. And that's, so no matter what you do, you're going to find a market for it, I would say. So. Junior Toppins, love your show. Me and Thank my you. grandson watch you all the time. Oh, God, hopefully he's old enough to hear bad words. <laughs> hopefully would, he doesn't get all the adult humor jokes of he's young. I'm really sorry. Would like to get a pied off you guys <sighs> to try and prove a dinker het pied we got off of Chris Hardwick on that patreon yeah they'll all be released on patreon that's so we have a deal we made when we first did patreon that we put all of our snakes there for sale first before they ever hit the public uh typically our way of sales now we are producing enough now we allow people to buy and sell to each other on patreon as well so that kind of cut into our own sales which was honestly by design so we could get more stuff in the public because i felt like we weren't getting out and about enough and that was hurting us so uh our sales go patreon first and then shows and that's typically what, what we do. This time of year is going to be our slowest part of the show season uh, because it's K-State football season. And I'm not missing that conflict. Of, that's why we're filming so hard in the morning. Uh, I have to be, we have to leave for tailgating probably by about, probably by about one or my wife's going to whoop my ass, right? So like, that's why we're filming it. Time is it? 10.30 in the morning. Is that right? Yeah. Oh. Uh, because of that. So, like, we don't make a lot of shows this time of year. You'll see us at a lot of local shows and, and local-ish. I would say probably come... Uh, there's about a five-month hiatus of life where there's no college sports that I care about. <laughs> anyway, sorry, baseball team. They don't exist. You guys are fine. Pete Hughes is a great coach. Yada, yada. I get, I get, I get it. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to make my football my basketball. Once those are over, then it's going to be, hey... We got nothing to do this weekend. Let's go to a show, boys. And we'll probably be doing a lot more shows. So thoughts on batwing rattlesnakes, timber to eastern. Uh, you know, they're pretty cool, but I and I think it's a, a cross that occurs naturally, along with timber to western sometimes. So I'm a little more lenient in my brain on naturally occurring crosses. I feel it's a little less of us monkeying with nature, of nature monkeys with itself in the same way. Same with like the gabinos and the gaboon and rhino, right? But uh I don't know. I think I love my timber. He's one of my favorite rattlesnakes. Uh, I don't think he gets more perfect. So I don't think I need Eastern Diamond back in him. That being said, I'd love to have an Eastern Diamond back one day just because of the sheer size. But I'm very limited in space on those. And the Westerns are so much fun to work with the morphs that I'm probably just going to stick with my Westerns. Anything else? I think that's all. All right, guys, we're going to hop off of here. Slide over to Patreon for just a little bit, catch up with those folks, and then we're going to do some watering, and I'm going to go watch football and try not to be hungover. Catch y'all next time.